so um, <clears throat> good 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 afternoon everybody um, so uh, today and uh, October 4th um, using these two times I will speak about uh, space robotics and uh, today's topic is about the uh, a mobile robot for uh, lunar planetary exploration missions so um, my name is Kazuya Yoshida uh, I'm speaking from Tohoku University Japan and so now I will uh, switch the screen uh, to my presentation file. So uh, now I will uh, continue. The today's topic is robotic systems for space exploration. Again, my name is Kazuya Yoshida. And I'm a professor in Tohoku University, Japan. So um, the, this slide uh, shows, um, uh, this is a kind of the um, a front page of my uh, research laboratory web page. And this shows uh, four pictures uh, about space robots. So when we say space robots, there are two big categories. The one is uh, robotic systems working in orbital environment, like free flying space robot, or uh, robotic systems on International Space Station. So these type of robots works in um, orbital environment. Uh, environment is uh, microgravity. So we uh, observe the unique motion dynamics in microgravity environment. And uh, this will be a main topic of my second lecture scheduled on October 4th. And then bottom two pictures shows uh, planetary exploration rovers or robots. So for the exploration robots, uh, we deal with the surface locomotion. So um, uh, we have um, surface of the remote planet or moon or asteroid. So the today's major focus is uh, this type of robot, the particularly a uh, locomotion systems with wheel. So uh, again, a um, uh, two big category, orbital robotics and planetary robotics. So today's topic is uh, planetary robotics. So um, the today's lecture has uh, um, three sections. One is a background and motivation. And so I will describe the briefly about the past and the current uh, robotic missions for um, exploration of Moon and Mars. And then um, I would like to go on uh, some technical details. And the first uh, uh, topic is a mobility. And a second uh, topic is a sensing and navigation. So uh, I will go on in this order. So um, speaking about a very uh, general background, um, the planetary robotics. The planetary robotics are um, a key technology for the probes for scientific exploration and precursors for future human expedition of remote planets. So the, these types of robots are expected to expand the frontier, frontier of scientific knowledge and human presence in space. Um, so um, we know that um, the planetary or lunar environment um, that that is a very far distant places and very difficult access uh, by human beings. So the good idea is to send out robotic devices first, then make a fundamental exploration and some um, construction works for human expedition. Then the human missions will follow after that. So. Um, the, this slide shows um, some of the uh, representative uh, past missions for lunar and planetary, particularly Mars, uh, exploration. So um, today we know the um, number of the Mars missions conducted by NASA, JPL, in the United States. So it, this is a kind of a series from the small test bed to the larger and larger. So from Sojana, Spirit, Opportunity, and currently the big rover named Curiosity is working uh, on the surface of Mars. But uh, uh, we also, I, sh I also should point that in early 70s, 1970 and 1973, Russian or former USSR uh, Soviet uh, mission named Lunokhod, uh, they have um, a couple of unmanned 
remotely operated rovers that traveled some 10 kilometers over the surface of the moon. So this was not very well recognized in the world um, at that time, but today uh, um, uh, we should um, uh, we should learn from uh, we should learn many things from these successful missions. And speaking about the future, uh, there are a number of the uh, potential missions. Just I put uh, one Japanese mission, uh, but I'm, I'm still we don't know uh, when it will be developed and launched uh, by Japanese space. Uh, agency. But um, as a very recent topic, uh, China is preparing the lunar lander and rover mission and and I'm not quite sure but um, somebody says that um, the December of this year the China will launch such a mission and try to land on the surface of the moon autonomously and then afterward uh, rovers, well a rover one rover may be deployed and uh, make uh, surface locomotion. So um, this picture is very amazing. This compares the three different rovers that was developed by um, NASA JPL and starting from Sojana, very small one, uh, which is called the uh, mic in the size of microwave oven. And the second one is uh, Spirit and Opportunity, a twin rover for a Mars exploration mission in 2004, that this is in the size of the golf cart. But currently the curiosity is um, um, a rover is much bigger, bigger than uh, the two uh, the, uh, people in the picture. This, uh, this is called a um, luxury car uh, uh, size. And so that this uh, uh, shows the evolution of the uh, NASA's rover. But um, um, please look at that, uh, the number of the wheels. So the, the size, size is different, but uh, the, all these rover has um, quite similar a quite same um, configuration for the wheel and suspension system called local boogie system. I will explain about it a little bit afterward. So then and speaking about the moon, so um, in 1960s and 70s, uh, NASA's mission called Apollo and uh, USSR, a Soviet mission called Luna, uh, they conducted um, a number of the uh, successful landing and the surface locomotion. Um, so then many people um, think that uh, Duna, the surface of the moon, is already well known and uh, there is not much left for um, a new discovery. But um, and this is not true. Um, there are a number of the places uh, where the Apollo or Aduna did not go and then there are a number of the uh, interesting, still a number of the interesting places for exploration. So, um, so Yes, for example, um, the, the scientist um, says um, in the polar region, we may be able to find uh, water, ice, and or other materials, and, and so on. So on. I will explain a little bit more afterward, but there are, uh, again, a number of the uh, interesting uh, places. And so the moon has another interest that is um, outpost for human habitation and the particularly um, this will be useful for the technological demonstration and crew training for future mass expeditions. So um, the, one of the possible scenario is to conduct the uh, rehearsals, trainings on the surface of, of the moon, then prepare for the future mass expeditions. Anyways, um, the, um, we are very much interested in robotic precursor missions and that requires autonomous landing, surface locomotion, and core sampling and excavation that is use, useful for uh, the scientific analysis and co uh, preparation for the uh, some uh, construction activities. And so finally, uh, we uh, hope to construct some habitation modules uh, on the surface of the moon and beyond. So um, these 
this slide shows uh, some pictures um, provided by uh, NASA and the JAXA. JAXA, J-A-X-A, is a Japanese space exploration agency. And these pictures shows um, human and robotic mission. So in a lunar exploration scenario, a human astronaut and robotic tools or devices should collaborate or cooperate uh, to conduct exploration missions and uh, construction and, as I said, uh, that the uh, habitation module uh, preparation and construction. So um, then um, I'd like to go on a quickly um, the science of the moon. So the moon is a very uh, unique uh, planet that rotates around the Earth. And it has a, a orbital a period, which is exactly the same time period for the rotation. So both of them are 27.32 days. So the, because of this synchronization uh, from the surface of the Earth, uh, we can see just one side of the moon. So the left uh, figure, the left picture, is a very well-known, very familiar um, um, surface texture of the moon, which is called foresight. And the rear side or back side, that uh, the scenery is very different. So, and then I, recently I found a very uh, interesting moving picture. So that this is um, the uh, image, um, a video clip for the uh, rotating moon. And so the this yes um I'm sorry that uh, by some reasons the the video is not really smooth but the original video is a very um a smooth showing yes such a continuous rotation so we found that the fourth side has a relatively black part and then then rear side is relatively white and bright so that this is a, a, because of the difference of the surface composition so and this black part um the initially people misunderstood as a sea, uh, so ocean, but uh, um, the lunar surface is a um, completely dry out environment today. So this um, dark part is a kind of the lava field. So this is, um, um, you know, uh, evidence of the volcanic activities uh, on the surface of the moon. So um, this is a picture of the Apollo lunar landing back in 1969. And actually, the, I was born in 1960, so uh, I watched uh, the lunar landing uh, in real time by the black and white video broad uh, TV uh, in Japan. Uh, so NASA made a worldwide uh, real time broadcasting of the lunar landing, and uh, that was uh, um, one of the uh, impressive uh, scene uh, um, when I, I was a child. And so um, I was so um, impressed, and uh, many people, actually the millions of the millions of people watched this video, and um, um, many people were inspired by uh, um, this um, very um, advanced and successful mission, and had the dream that uh, we may go to the moon in some future. But um, uh, so far we don't have any um, frequent uh, access uh, onto the surface of the moon, unfortunately. So the, during the Apollo mission, um, they did conducted um, such um, a surface locomotion by using the um, um, electric car, which looked like a golf cart, and driven by human astronaut. Um, so this uh, is a very um, um, unique and in interesting uh, uh, video clip that this shows the yeah. Uh, from this uh, video, we can find that the surface of the moon is covered by fine dust like material, which is called lunar regolith. And but because of the, um, the completely vacuum, vacuum environment, so that these particles um, fall down back to the surface very quickly. If, we, if there is an atmosphere, it can stay in the air they can stay in the air, but um, because of the um, a completely vacuum environment. And also that the gravity, because of small gravity, so the vehicle is bouncing. And so actually the surface gravity is one sixth of the uh, Earth's gravity. So um, this is um, um, another characteristics of the surface of the moon.
So um, the recent uh, NASA's uh, mission, a very um, um, called LRO, um, uh, which has a very high resolution camera, it captures the remaining um, uh, evidence of the Apollo lunar landing. And this is the Apollo 17's uh, landing site, and this is the, um, the, the remaining descent stage of the lunar lander. And uh, this, uh, from this picture, we see the traces of the lunar rover uh, travels and uh, some equipment left over the surface, and a uh, lunar LRV, lunar roving vehicle, uh, was left over here. And so, um, yeah, this is one of the very, very clear evidence that um, the human beings actually uh, visited and stayed over there in late 90s and early 70s. So, um, later mission um, uh, shows um, some more um, scientific discoveries. And this picture is taken by Japanese lunar orbiter called Kaguya, which was launched in 2007. And this um, makes a polar, okay, a circular orbit, but uh, goes through South Pole and North Pole. And this is a, a typical orbit for the uh, kind of the uh, uh, remote sensing, so that this uh, spacecraft uh, made a full, full scan of the surface of the moon. And then um, the Japan built a very a precision map of the surface of the moon. And this picture also ha shows a very interesting, <coughs> sorry. This picture it has a, a another um, uh, insta interesting characteristics. Um, actually, this is um, almost uh, on the top of the um, um, south pole of the moon, and behind that, the surface of the moon, we see the Earth. And but uh, uh, in the foreground, we hear um, crater, and which is which has a name. Um, Shackleton, Shackleton Crater. So this is a, one of the unique places uh, over the surface of the moon because the, at the bottom of this crater, um, um, we cannot get any sunshine, sunlight um, forever. So I'm um, just going back to one slide here. So this is um, the um, kind of the, the configuration of the uh, Earth and Moon, and this uh, horizontal line is a plane of the uh, Sun, so solar orbit. And so um, the uh, Earth has an inclination, actual uh, tilt, uh, with 23 uh, degrees. That's why uh, we know that that's why the, that we have four seasons. And depending on, on the, the revolution around the sun, and we get um, a spring, a summer, uh, autumn, and winter. But um, moon, just by chance, has a very a unique configuration. So with, uh, it has some inclination with the uh, orbit around the Earth and also the actual tilt to orbit. But as a result, actual tilt to ecliptic um, line or surface. This means that uh, the okay, surface, including the sun, uh, just it has a 1.5 degrees, very, very small degrees, almost zero degrees. This means that there is no four seasons, any seasons um, on, on the moon. So that's why um, the Shackleton crater, uh, which is a bit close to the uh, uh, axis of the rotation, um, so just a okay, different change of the sun angle in um, 1.5 degrees. So that uh, this crater has a four, more than four kilometers deep. And so um, the sunshine never directly uh, uh, illuminate the bottom of the crater. So that's why the temperature is very low. And the Japanese mission Kaguya measured the temperature of the bottom, uh, which was a minus 180 degrees Celsius. So the moon is a very, very uh, special and cold place, particularly in, in the South, North Pole and South Pole area. And so but just that because of the, this deflection, uh, it has a very, very little illumination. So the high resolution and high sensitivity camera mounted on Kaguya 
a probe um, that we took on uh, this picture. And so the scientists um, expect that uh, in such a cold temperature, if there exists water, and the water stays forever in the form of ice. But uh, this picture shows that there is no ice-like reflection. So that this is uh, uh, one of the evidence that there is no uh, surface water or surface ice. And maybe, uh, the, um, but the, another uh, remote sensing um, uh, measurement suggests the existence of the uh, hydrogen and oxygen. So that this is a very strong sign of the H2O water. So um, today that many scientists believe that uh, if you dig, if we dig this um, bottom soil, we may be able to find uh, water ice composition um, in mixed with the uh, soil. But anyway, this is one of the um, fascinating destination for a future uh, lunar exp expedition. But a Japanese Kaguya mission uh, find another interesting feature uh, on the surface of the moon. So um, that is this small dot-like spot. So um, we know that the surface of the moon has a number of such um, circular um, uh, texture, which is called the impact crater. So that, that most of them are generated by uh, impact of the meteorite. And however, that some of them, some of the circular ho uh, holes a circular uh, texture has um, very, very different uh, characteristics. So that this was first discovered by uh, Kaguya's high-resolution camera. And then after careful um, um, examination of this uh, special feature, uh, this is completely different from the impact crater. But uh, this is something like an, an access window to the a, a underwater, uh, underground, uh, tubes or tunnels. So then why, the question is why uh, the, there is or there are um, underground tunnels uh, on the moon. So the many um, scientists today believe that uh, because of the uh, volcanic activities, these are the uh, remaining uh, structure because of the lava flow, and we call them lava tubes. So then just this is the, a kind of the skylight uh, of the lava tu tubes. So then this, um, from this picture, we can imagine that uh, the underneath the surface of the moon, and there are a number of the tubes, and some tubes have such a, a small void or a skylight. So that these are uh, some artistic uh, images, but um, um, yeah, very uh, exciting images to uh, that uh, we can have a dream to explore, explore uh, not on the surface but an uh, underground of the moon. So um, we may uh, discover uh, something new uh, underground. Also, the underground areas are good candidate for future human habitation because they um, and. The, such a tunnel structure is um, um, very useful uh, as a shield from uh, meteorite impacts and uh, uh, cosmic or atomic radiation. So um, um, in future, uh, we uh, can plan uh, uh, human uh, exploration, human robotic plus human exped expedition exploration uh, to the underground of the moon. So now uh, I would like to go on the main topic, uh, technical topic on the um, uh, robotic systems uh, for uh, uh, to make uh, possible such um, exploration over the surface of um, remote planet or moon. So these pictures shows uh, our test bed uh, for the research uh, purpose, and the next one has um, yes um, moving video clips. And um, so we, since um, 1997, we developed many different uh, designs of uh, mobile robots. And um, so the, this uh, video shows uh, the two-wheel robot. This is very simple. And actually, this is a student um, a project. But uh, um, this robot travels very well in such a relatively flat, uh, desert-like uh, desert environment.
And so this is a four wheel robot, and, and this show is a six wheel. And for this suspension, uh, we imitate the um, um, local bogey systems that was that has been used for uh, NASA's Mars exploration rovers. So as you can see, that such um, um, a, a passive linkage like uh, suspension system works very well to cope with such a rocky environment. But uh, for the much much more difficult environment, such a truck like um, locomotion system uh, will be useful. And actually, uh, we developed this type of robot for the uh, uh, terrestrial application in the case, in the situation of the search and rescue after the earthquake like disasters. And so this shows a um, much higher capability in a, a very very difficult um, environment. So um, now I will continue on the, the mobility and chassis design of the mobile system. So um, again, this is the uh, video clip uh, of the uh, six-wheel system uh, connected by a local bogey uh, type of the passive linkage. So this shows, um, as I mentioned, very good uh, locomotion capability in such a um, rocky uh, environment. So this mechanism has been well known um, many since many many years ago, and then um, uh, NASA's researchers uh, picked up this design for their uh, uh, planetary rovers. So um, th this is the uh, a kind of the kinematics um, a simple um, uh, illustration about the uh, local bogey suspension system. So that uh, these are um, completely passive. Um, joint um, a linkage mechanism. And uh, this doesn't show, but uh, from the left side and right side, uh, there is a kind of the differential so that the center body keep uh, the uh, level um, or just uh, in a, uh, the middle angle of the, the left and right uh, links. Um, so um, that from the um, and research uh, interest point of view, uh, we uh, conducted the modeling of the, this, this uh, linkage system and, and derived the kinematic and dynamic model uh, of this um, um, suspension system. Um, so the, speaking about the, my background, um, when I was a graduate student, um, uh, I had an uh, interest of the uh, kinematics and dynamics of the multi-body system. And, uh, Actually, I began with the uh, such a multi-body system in free floating environment. This uh, will be a topic of the next my next lecture. But uh, um, so I began with a modeling of the multi-body system with a free floating system. The character main characteristics of the free floating system is uh, um, base body can move because uh, everything is freely floating. So um, so that I began with um, linkage. Uh, these are the three configuration linkage system with moving base body. So if we take out the ground from this picture, uh, okay, something like this. And this is the uh, the single leg configuration. But um, so the main body and linkage system. So I began with the uh, fundamental equation for this type of um, um, linkage system. So then. To me, the vehicle is just um, a special case that at end point uh, of the linkage system, uh, we have um, contact with surface. And on the surface, uh, just what we need to, need to do is to evaluate the contact force and the rebounding force. So uh, this is a, a, a force action and reaction type of the very simple principle. And, and uh, in case of leg, uh, we have a kind of point of point contact, maybe surface contact. Uh, but uh, um, in this case of the uh, wheel, we have just a special type of the, we need a special type of the contact model. So uh, once we have a, a motion dynamic equation for the linkage system, which has a moving base body, which has a multiple contact points, and at the uh, point of contact, we have wheel model. So then we can compute everything. So this is under my, my um, basic idea. So then um, I conducted such a um, motion dynamic uh, simulation um, maybe 10 or 15 years ago.
So um, that this is a, 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 a precise model of the NASA's Sojourner rover. Um, which has six wheels and local bogey passive uh, suspension system. And as a comparison, we have um, a very simple uh, experiment um, uh, of the rover that was um, developed um, uh, in my laboratory. So um, this comparison tells, um, um, uh, so this uh, dynamic or kinematic models uh, works very well. So then speaking a little bit more about this surface and wheel contact. So uh, if the surface is, is very rigid and we have a rubber tire, so the, this combination uh, is observed for the uh, uh, motor cars today. And so then and we can discuss the, this contact model by using the friction and the friction coefficient. The, however, uh, we soon fi figure out that the planetary environment, uh, lunar environment, the situation is a very different from the um, uh, conventional uh, motor cars on the paved surface. As you can see from this video clip, the surface is very soft. It deforms very easily, and we can slip very easily. So uh, we need um, a kind of a special model to describe that such um, slip, sink, and dig kind of the uh, behavior. Um, so that if we mistake in the control, uh, as we can uh, observe or experience when you drive a car in a beach sand area, the vehicle can easily get stuck. So that we should be very, very careful. Um, so that actually that um, this kind of things happen in the NASA's um, uh, Mars exploration. Yes, actually this is a... Uh, um, um, real um, um, video clip uh, obtained by NASA, NASA's uh, mission, and this is an um, opportunity rover. And the opportunity and spirit, these rovers are very well designed for the locomotion over the rocky surface. Hard and rocky surface, they worked very well, but a uh, um, very flat area, uh, which look, looks um, very simple. However, the surface materials uh, it was very soft, so then they had uh, such a problem. So if you try to get out and uh, speed up the wheel, you can make the situation worse and so dig in, uh, into the surface. So that this um, um, such kind of critical situation occurred on the surface of the Mars, and uh, we can uh, easily expect uh, the same thing on the surface of the Moon. So then we need um, the special attention and uh, also a good model to, to um, describe um, the physics uh, around this situation. So uh, today, um, I don't have much time to go into the details, but um, just uh, I would like to uh, make a quick introduction just for the beginning. Um, so the strip and skid are, are key key things for uh, to describe uh, such a situation. And for the car, from the car industry, uh, we have uh, such a definition of slip ratio and slip angles uh, by using the, uh, the velocity uh, of the vehicle and the velocity of the wheel. So um, the, this, um, uh, just for example, uh, R omega uh, minus V, uh, this means uh, the R is a radius of the wheel and the omega is an uh, angular velocity of the wheel, and the V is a um, velocity of the vehicle. So the, if there is no slip, that these two velocities are um, exactly the same. But if the wheel rotation is gr greater and vehicle velocity is smaller, uh, we have some difference. Then this uh, is a situation that the wheel slips over the surface. And in the worst case, that the wheel slips in very high speed, but uh, there is no velocity in the vehicle. So we experience the uh, maximum value. We get the maximum value from this equation, uh, value one. And so this is the 100% slip um, of the wheel. And in the other case, this is the, the braking case. And uh, so the wheel, the, the, the rotation of the wheel completely stops, but uh, still because vehicle is moving uh, in a okay, braking phase. So the, in, in this case, at maximum, we can get minus one um, for the, uh, from this definition. So that this is 100% the negative slip. Uh, of the um, um, wheel. 
So uh, in such a way that uh, uh, we can um, evaluate the uh, um, uh, evaluate the, the uh, percentage of the wheel uh, sweep. So um, the further modeling of the uh, the wheel and deformable soil environment. So uh, we here the first simplicity we assume that the wheel is very rigid, and only the surface can make a deformation. And so in such a case, there are two major approaches uh, of modeling called uh, DEM and continuum modeling. So um, the, this, uh, the DEM, uh, discrete element model, is something like a finite, finite element uh, method, and, but that uh, relies on a computational power. And, but this uh, continuum modeling uh, is based on the, um, uh, uh, some half theoretical, half empirical modeling by using mathematics, and this uh, this uh, uh, field um, has been developed by uh, Becker and Wong and uh, many others. But uh, the, uh, particularly the, the Becker's textbook uh, is is very famous. And actually, he is um, um, an engineer. Uh, he was an engineer of the uh, General Motors when uh, Apollo lunar rover uh, was developed in the United States. And uh, based on the textbooks uh, by Becker and Wong, uh, we get uh, uh, this equation system. But uh, again, I will not go on the uh, details. But um, and just somehow, uh, we can model. We can model and we can evaluate the, uh, the traction force and the force of uh, the sinkage and, and such and such. And so the, here that we use um, uh, the degrees of slippage, slip ratio in the model. So um, the, the equation is the same, but uh, here um, I picked up some uh, key parameters from this, from this equation system. And C appears here is, uh, is called soil cohesion, and the phi uh, is called friction angle. These two parameters characterize the soil itself. And the K that appears in the other equation is called shear deformation modulus. So this describes the uh, degrees of the interaction between wheel and soil. So, um, so these uh, three parameters usually only a uh, identified only be identified from experiments, so um, there is no no theory uh, uh, to to tell the exact values uh, uh, from the uh, type of the soils. So just that uh, we we need testing and we evaluate uh, by experiments. So uh, this is um, that's why we need uh, um, uh, such um, um, testing device. Um, so this is uh, to test the, um, the characteristics of the soil and the wheel soil interaction. So we use uh, such a small uh, slender sandbox where the one single wheel travels uh, from one direction uh, with some um, different rotational velocity. And in this case, that uh, you see that the wheel start rotating and uh, the try tries to travel forward, but uh, simultaneously it digs and sink into the uh, soil. Um, so then during th this process, we measure the, this um, the position, rotation, angle, and force, and torque. And so then uh, we make a one point uh, the measurement. Then we plot uh, the each um, uh, measurement data uh, onto the graph. For example, uh, with slip ratio and drawback pool. Drawback pool is a traction effort or a net traction force. So, um, as in general, we have um, uh, okay, yes, if we have a higher slip ratio, uh, we can increase the uh, traction effort. Um, but uh, um, uh, the, the ideal situation is uh, um, yes, with very a uh, small uh, slip ratio, and we should have uh, the traction. Uh, a, a horizontal uh, attraction, uh, which is called drawback pool. But anyway, um, all, all these um, the major data uh, data sets are, are scattered, and so uh, sometimes that, that agrees with uh, theory very well, but uh, sometimes they are not. But uh, just uh, that we can get uh, such kind this kind of trend with different uh, slip angle and and uh, other uh, uh, parameters. And so anyway, that we uh, conduct a number of the uh, experiments to identify uh, 
to understand the characteristics and identify the parameters. The, by the way, the, this um, um, special material uh, with gray color, and this material is called Luna Regolith Simulant. So simulated soil, uh, which has um, the same characteristics, physical and chemical characteristics of Luna surface soil. The, because of the Apollo mission, and Russians, uh, Soviet uh, lunar mission, uh, human beings has uh, uh, certain kilograms of the uh, lunar soil samples. So um, after the careful analysis of this mater these materials, uh, today we can tell the, um, the physical uh, characteristics and the chemical composition of the lunar surface soil. So then some industrial company produced the quite similar material for the study of the lunar soils. And just for example, uh, this, this uh, surface texture is called uh, grousers. And so if we have um, a longer, um, a, a larger height of the grousers and an increased number of the grousers also, uh, we can uh, increase the uh, traction effort because, because of this uh, bulldozing effect. So um, this is a very simple uh, example, but uh, uh, the question is that what is uh, the optimum number of the grousers and what is the uh, optimum height of the grousers and what is the uh, optimum shape of the grousers? And uh, we have uh, um, so many questions, and so uh, we conduct a number of the uh, um, testing uh, to to better understand the um, the uh, characteristics and performance of the grousers and wheels, wheel design. So um, this is a um, um, very interesting comparison of the two cases. And uh, yes, uh, in this case, okay, we have um, six wheel rover, and I will run this video clip again. And w six wheel rover and six independent, six wheels are independently driven. And uh, in this very bad case, the one of the wheel start spinning, then dig into the surface. Then uh, this makes such a mountain after the wheel. So that's why that it uh, disturbed the locomotion of the uh, rear wheel. And uh, finally, it completely stopped. And so Biku uh, lost the mobility. And uh, after such a situation, it's uh, very difficult to get out uh, from this uh, critical situation. However, the, with exactly the same sound, this is actually beach sound, not the lunar uh, simulated sound, but soil, but uh, beach sound, the same sound, same inclination, and the same vehicle, but with slightly different control, control algorithm. Um, as you, you can see, so, okay, this is a critical point, but, uh, you know, that this uh, case, the vehicle didn't have any problem. Um, so this is not because of the mechanical design, but this is because of the difference of the control. So that this is a very good evidence on the uh, traction control is very important. So the difference is very, very small, actually, in these two cases. But um, um, yeah, with a small difference in control algorithms, algorithms makes a big difference um, in the result. So uh, that's why, uh, again, that the control or driving technique is very important to, to negotiate with such a, a sandy or rude soil environment. 